What's up, everybody? Across here. All right, we are about 60 miles southwest of Atlanta, Georgia. This little town has a really nice historic district. It's what I call a contrast city, which means it's got some really nice areas like where we are now, town square and all that. And then not too far away, it's got some, some very serious looking hoods, some of the most hood looking hoods I've ever seen. I think this tops Columbus, Georgia, so it's nice to travel and explore new places. Absolutely stunning settings here. It's beautiful. The city is 48% uh, African-American, 45% uh, white, 5% Latino, and there's also an Asian population, which is very interesting, 2.5% uh, Asian. Now, uh, there are car... Um, car factories Hyundai, Kia all that is produced in this part of the country so I'm going to guess that the Asian population is probably going to be more towards the Korean so there's probably a lot of Koreans out here due to the auto factories being nearby as you can see the town's beautifully restored uh, there's a lot of historic buildings, nice little downtown. And it's right on the Alabama border. So as you come into uh, as you come into Alabama, this town's right on the edge. You guys have been asking me if I have a new camera. No new camera. But I do have a stabilizer for the iPhone. These iPhones are great recording machines, by the way. They really do a good job. And with the stabilizer, all the well. So we have some French history here. Lafayette. So this side of Georgia here, um, you know, Georgia towns are kind of awkward and weird. Notice somebody hauling a boat. This area is known for really good bass fishing. Georgia towns are kind of weird. And they're weird in that they can be as hood as they can, charming. And because there's so many nice downtown districts and really well-kept and all that, a little bit more expensive on the Georgia side than it is on the Alabama side. So I'm personally a fan of the Alabama side just because it's a little bit more affordable, more reasonable on the prices. But as you can see, awesome little district. The weather here is mild. You can actually walk around and do stuff. Man, Florida is unbearable. It really is unbearable back in Florida. So I just saw a car pass by playing Spanish music. You'll see a little bit more of that here in Georgia than you will in Alabama. This part of uh, Georgia, most towns will have at least four to 12% Latino population. So there's a lot more Latinos on the Georgia side than there are on the Alabama side. And I'm mentioning that because we're right on the border here. You cross, cross that bridge and you're back in Alabama. On the other side is Lynette. We did some videos there, some very interesting hoods. And this is the Georgia side of it also. Great fishing out there. You notice a boat, uh, car hauling a boat earlier great fishing out here supposed to be supposed to be good bass fishing you guys know i love bass fishing i just haven't had a chance to get around to it i've been so busy with so many other things um i don't know when i'll have a chance to go fishing again 
I can smell some really good barbecue coming from around here somewhere. The South is known for its barbecue. And there's definitely good barbecue in the vicinity. We can smell it. There's definitely a really good barbecue place around here. But I've been trying to eat healthier and I'm having trouble with my stomach and um, I've been struggling with, with a lot of stuff with my health. Um, you know what I've noticed really makes it bad is like today we went to, uh, to Atlanta airport to take dad back to Florida because he wants to go back to Florida because in Florida he um back in Florida he's got his TV channels that he likes and apparently spending time with his TV channels is more important than spending time with his son. We'll have to address that in the future. <laughs> I'll have to look into that a little bit further in the future, but apparently he misses uh, Telemundo more than his son, so. Well. Right, guys so that's a nice little walk through downtown we're also going to take a little drive show you guys what the city looks like a little bit quicker so far the town square is up to my expectations it's very clean orderly it's got enough businesses and atmosphere lots of charm everything you'd want from a small town of course uh let's see if we can find some nice historic districts too so far all i've seen to the city are just kind of some grimy inner city neighborhoods I'm not sure if you're supposed to just walk across this or not. I guess you're not, but there's so little going on here. I don't think it matters. There's like no cars for miles. It is a Sunday, that's the other thing. Um, do not judge the town's vibe by the fact uh, it's empty right now. It's actually a pretty lively city. Um, but today is a Sunday and you know how people are in the South. On Sunday, they go to church. And after church, they go to some wedding or party or dinner or somebody. So you're not going to expect that on a Sunday in the South, there's going to be a lot going on on a Sunday. So don't judge the vibe of this place by the fact it's empty today. It's a Sunday, which actually wasn't a bad day to get out into Atlanta if you think about it. Town's definitely uh, very nice. I'm so far, I'm really liking this town. It's got some. Georgia does have nicer towns than Alabama, to be honest. Um, but at the same time, there's more of a contrast in. Georgia than there is in Alabama and what I mean by that is like okay yeah downtown's really nice but the hoods here are pretty rough so it's kind of like um I I, I I I like Alabama more it seems a little bit more fair you could say to everybody um not saying that Georgia isn't but it just seems that you know, like, this town's got some amazing little, you know, downtown districts and all. Better kept. More business, more money moving for sure than Alabama. Yet, at the same time. With all that. I guess what I'm trying to say is that to me, it seems that Georgia is more of a contrast place where, 
yeah, there's more money and there's more economy, but then there's also more poverty. So it doesn't seem like uh, wealth is distributed evenly in like Georgia. Not sure why. I haven't really spent enough time here to figure it out. But I will venture to say that even though Georgia has better looking towns than Alabama, there's still more contrast here. Uh, there's less wealth equality. Um, so I'm not really sure what gives some people kind of a much better advantage economically than others, but uh, it's more visible in Georgia. Um, it's, I think it's actually more stark than in Florida, to be honest. So every state's got different laws, different economies, different things going on that make uh, things differently. So I guess Georgia is a better state if you have more money, I guess, or more education could be the, the key. I don't know. I'm not sure. Can't really uh, express an opinion on it because I'm not sure what leads to it, but can't really express an opinion on it. But it could be education, it could be how hard you want to work. Who knows, it could be legal status, who knows what. But definitely here in Georgia, the differences are a little bit more stark between the haves and the have-nots compared to Alabama where it's more even. Oh. So it's a really nice clean town overall. I mean, got great little businesses that's for sure i'd love to be here on a weekday and kind of see it all but with the virus too i figured if i can do a lot of my videos during the weekend then i'm not around as much people i'm really trying like i thought i got it for you know i thought i got it who knows if i really did though because i wasn't able to get tested back in florida i could have got tested when i came to alabama because in alabama they have better basically if you want to get tested in alabama you can florida made it difficult to get tested as soon as I came to Alabama, when I went to get my, my, uh, I went to get my water and my light and all my utilities, uh, I went to do some stuff at the health department and right there, they're like, Hey, do you want to get tested? We'll do it for you free and you'll have results pretty quickly. But since I was in the process of buying a house, I was like, man, if I get tested for this crap and I end up being positive, how is this going to affect my house buying? I mean, I got to have inspectors come out. I got to meet, meet her so i was like you know what it may not be the right time for me to get tested because by the time i had got to alabama i was already feeling better so i'm assuming i had it but do i know if i had it i don't so i got a little oh that thing's cool what is that man check it out y'all it's like a mural here and some just right in the middle of town you got some really nice stuff hiding right in the middle of it all So yeah, like I assumed that I kind of knew, but I really never really did know. So I figured, you know, I'm getting a little too cocky with this. And um, I've been around some people who are um, more informed than me. And I've, you know, met more people. And uh, I've kind of realized that this is really going through these little towns uh out here so uh you may not know that like if you're just at home watching tv or nobody at your work has got it or anything you can kind of assume oh i you know nobody at my work's got it or blah 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 but when you meet somebody and kind of their whole life and their whole family and their workplace is kind of in disarray you're like oh crap this is real maybe i should take note so I feel that because I assumed I already got it in Florida. I got a little cocky and I got a little kind of careless. But I really don't know if I got it. And who knows if there's different strains of this stuff. So you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm just going to be a little bit more careful. Um, do some of these things on Sundays. Um, I really didn't want to be... Um, I had stuff I'd do on Sundays, every Sunday. Right? And I wasn't able to do it this Sunday because... 
dad booked his flight back to Florida and he just, he said, all right, son, I've had enough back to Florida. So I was like, really? On a Sunday drive to Atlanta? I was kind of hoping I could rest. So really nice town. Seems like there's great little businesses in these little towns. Like I said, it's very obvious that there's a little bit more life on the Georgia side as far as businesses and stuff like that. Maybe more money for sure. But at the same time, there's also more poverty when you drive around the towns and more hood environment. You know, it's like it's a lot of places that are not exactly rich, but at least they keep up their yard. I don't know. Two totally different states, man. They're right next to each other, but trust me, they're different. Two totally different states with two totally different things going on. So yeah, um, Georgia and Alabama next to each other, certainly. Exactly the same, I would venture to say. These are quite different towns, quite different states with quite different things going on. Not exactly the same. So we walk. So yeah, you guys have been asking me, Jose, what's up with the video quality? You got a new camera, you got a new camera? I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's the iPhone. It's the same old iPhone we've always had. What is different is that now our iPhone is on a stabilizer. It's from DJI, which is a company that makes drones. Talking about drones, I still haven't got my drone license. And after getting uh, warned that if I violate these drone laws, I can get up to a $5,000 fine. I'm like, I don't know if I want to fly this drone again. Maybe we should kind of trade the drone in for a new camera for the channel or something. Because, man, oh, man, that's, that's you know, like I got to pay 150 to take the class, which is fine. I'll pay and I'll take the class. But I've already got a warning from the FAA. So... If I get another violation, it's going to be like a $5,000 fine. And I'm just not willing to risk it because you could violate a law, a drone law. I mean, these things are not exact. These things are, you know, like how do they really know if you're 200 feet up in the air or if you're 198 feet up in the air? So I'm not taking a risk. I'm not going to. Um... So I'm just not willing to take the risk. It's like, I don't think it's really worth the risk, really. So forget about the FAA with their drone regulations. Maybe I could just get, trade the drone in for a really nice camera and I can use that anywhere. And it is what it is, really. I mean, what other option do we have at this point? Did I turn the, I think I left the GoPro on, did I? I might've, I did. Okay, that's dumb. <laughs> 